Well, 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 it is another opportunity for us to wax poetic. I am joined by my good friend and colleague, Terry Combs, who is the OG of sales at Equipment Zone and also a, a fabulous trainer in every way. Terry, how are you today? I'm doing great, Jay. Looking forward to talking about niche markets, one of my favorite subjects. So. It is indeed one of your favorite subjects, as it is one of my favorite subjects. But together, um, we are more than just a dynamic duo on this topic. And I want to give a shout out to you and your other colleague and co-host, I would say sidekick, but he might not take that well. But um, because I've listened to several of the Two Regular Guys podcasts where you have had this topic, and it is a lively topic. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. You know, uh, Jay, it's uh, some of our most listened to shows on the Two Regular Guys podcast. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, it's, uh, that's a, a weekly podcast talking about all types of garment and product decorating. And Jay, we went over 350 episodes here uh, about a month or so ago, so eight years. And every Friday at 11 o'clock Eastern time, we talk about uh, product garment decorating. That's uh, to the number two regular guys.com. And yeah, we, uh, we, we've done a lot of shows on niche markets. In fact, we're doing one in, in two weeks again, and we just get tons of response to it because people are really interested in finding that focus, finding that one or two or three markets that they can really, uh, that they can really focus on and become expert at. Yeah, I think that's really why this topic is always evergreen. Even though you and I have had different uh, DTG academies where we've talked about this topic um, and other training opportunities where we've had chances to connect on this topic, you know, people consistently ask us, why is niche marketing, niche marketing so important? What, it, what is it about this? And I think it's really a strategic element for businesses, especially small businesses and those that are new businesses. I think this is your primary... Uh, this is your this is your best offense and defense if you think of it as um, a way to uh, increase your visibility, a way to increase sales. Um, so, any anything you want to share before we get into some specifics about niche marketing? What what's what? How do you help people understand this principle? Well, you know, Jay, here's the thing about niche markets. And and when I first started as a screen printer and are you ready? 1979. One more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, 1979. It is not necessary for anybody to type in. I wasn't born yet, uh, but but the, I had a competitor. Was Linda, was Linda from the office born in 1970? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. But uh, but you know, I had a competitor, and their slogan was "We print anything." And I thought, well, yeah, I get. Yeah, you're you're diverse, but. But also, it made me think, you're probably good at what you do, but you're not great because you, you do a little bit of everything. And, and the thing about a niche market, and for anybody who doesn't know, that's, a, that's finding a, a, a segment of the marketplace and knowing everything there is to know about that market. And by doing that, it's very, very difficult for people to compete with you. And the secrets to every market and, and if, you, if you focus on one or two or three niche markets, you know the secrets. And Jay, if I could uh, tell you a quick story from, from uh, one of my yes. main classes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this, this relates back to DTG as well. There's a, um, I've had three people attend my screen printing classes whose niche market is forest fires. Hmm. And, and I, I'm thinking, You're forest like, fire. what? what? <laughs> so what they do is... They, in this scenario, they have screen printing press, but you could certainly do it with a direct garment machine as well. And wherever there's a forest fire on the West Coast, they go there and they print shirts in the parking lot and sell them to all the firefighters. I fought the XYZ fire in Gosh. Carlsbad, California or whatever. And uh, I had a firefighter in one of my classes and he said, oh, I, I go to those forest fires. The line is across the parking lot. Every firefighter wants one of those shirts. And... And so in, in a class I had here, uh, gosh, it was late last year uh, here at Workforce Products in, in uh, Phoenix, one of the people in the class had a slide that had a forest fire on it talking about niche markets. And she raised her hand and she said, that's the exact market that I'm in. Oh and I said, gosh. wow, you're the third one. She goes, but I know the secret. Ah. And I said, well, do you mind sharing the secret? And she goes, yeah, because nobody else can use the secret. She said, I work for a company that makes the chemical that they drop from helicopters and airplanes on the fires. And wow. they have to tell us where all the firefighters are gathering 
so we don't accidentally drop chemical on them. So she said, I know before anybody knows where all the firefighters are meeting, I can be there first printing shirts and selling them to all the firefighters. I'm like, my gosh, you do have the secret. That well, it's amazing. It, I know, but, but Jay, and you all know this, every niche market has one or two or three secrets that yeah. if you are just, hey, I print anything, you, you're gonna just slide right over that. And, and the people in those marketplaces, in those niche markets, they're gonna know if you're faking it or not. They're gonna know if yep. you're one of them and if you're 100%. one of them, they want to buy from you. So, 100%. Yeah. And you know, Terry right. makes me think about, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but it, you touched on something I wanted to bring up, which was the authenticity and the relevance. This is the opposite of mass marketing. You're not, tr you're not trying to know everything for everyone, just the opposite. You are hyper-focused in this little narrow area. And the funny thing about that is when you think about the authenticity and the relevance, um, there's there's a way for you by targeting that niche and speaking directly to that audience, you're doing it in a way that is in their tone and in their voice and in their culture. So it comes across as real and, and, and therefore it's, it's authentic. And, and it's almost like, Hey, he's one of us. Terry's one of the gang. He gets us, you know, let's right. support him. Let's work with him. Let's buy from him. And, and, you know, Jay, and here's another thing that when I talk about niche markets, I'll have a lot of people saying, well, you know, I'm trying to find this, this idea that nobody else is doing. Well, you know what? Guess what? You don't. You don't have to have a, have a, a, a unique idea. You, you can do the exact same thing that, well, like I said, three different companies who've been to my screen printing class who, who, who sell in the forest fire marketplace. Well, that's just the people that came to my class. How many other people are involved in that? The, the thing about it is, it doesn't have to be a unique idea. You just have to do it better. You know, do good quality work, deliver on time. That's, that's the key to success in, in garment and product decorating. You know, quality work, deliver it on time. The, um, I, I have people come to my classes in, uh, in DTG classes, screen printing classes, all types of decorating. And, yeah, and one right. of them might raise their hand and say, well, I have a, I have a, a, a very unique market. In fact, it's probably, are you ready, Jay? I'm, I'm sitting greatest, down. The greatest t-shirt idea of all time. Uh, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. And they're like, I don't know if I want to say it in front of the class, you know, because no one else is doing that. And I'm standing up there, not in my waiting. head going, I, I, I don't even, I haven't even heard you yet. And I probably know five people who are doing exactly the same <laughs> thing right now. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right. Because... It, all, all that matters is there's plenty of business out there for all of us. I mean, how many, how many firefighters have we all met who do garment decorating? I hundreds, mean, tons of hundreds, them. Hundreds. And, and guess what? Uh, most of them are successful because yeah. there's, there is so much business out there. If you, uh, again, do good quality work, deliver on time, you're going to have more business you can handle. And, and maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but business will build upon business because here's, here's the grim reality of garment decorating. The grim reality is there are lots and lots and lots of decorators. There aren't very many good decorators. If you do good work, people will stay with you. And they, it's not based on price. It's based on quality of your work, delivering it on time. So I'm, I'm going to step off my soapbox on quality of work, deliver it on time. <laughs> uh, write that down. I mean, it's so true for every decorator. And, you know, let me add a little plug here for or anyone listening, because clearly our lane is when Terry and I start talking, we start talking typically about apparel decoration, and then we move into specifically directed garment printing. Now, if you were a sublimation printer, if you, if you own a vinyl cutter and a heat press, if you're an embroiderer, if you're a screen printer, if you're a laser engraver, whatever, Everything we talk about still applies to you. You can totally take these, these concepts, these strategies, narrow your focus, find that niche, look on a local level first, be authentic, take Terry's advice, do quality work and deliver on time, and your business will grow. It just will. Um, now, there are some advantages, and I hope, Terry, you'll expand on this a little bit and give us some more flavor here in our secret recipe of the fact that you have and own a DTG printer may open up some additional doors using this strategy of niche marketing or target marketing or however we want to kind of frame this. We, we, we often call it niche marketing, but um, 
it's a strategy. It's, it's, a, it's a marketing strategy and it's highly effective. I'm going to say this again, if you're a new business or if you're a small business and you're just starting out and it, this, it, maybe, maybe DTG printing is new to you. Like you're an embroiderer for five, six, seven years. You finally taken that leap of faith. You met Terry at the MBM Portland show. You found out he's not a predatory salesman. He has your best interests at heart. He knows the printer top to bottom. He can actually print. You know, that's kind of revolutionary for a salesperson. Um, and then you realize this is a perfect addition or complement to my business. So niche marketing for us is, is, is a foundational strategy that we both enjoy. So DTG printers, strap in, buckle up, get ready, because Terry Combs is about to take the wheel and talk to us more about some of these specific targets within the direct to garment zone on the topic of niche marketing. All right. <laughs> is, that, is that too much? Did I, go to, did I take it to I, like I, 11 or 12? Hey, that's the beauty of having your own webinar. It's, <laughs> it's the true. level that's is where true. you want to take it, right? <laughs> Taking it to the top. Well, but, well, kick us off, Terry. Tell us a little bit about where you want to go and the, the well, concepts that we've already outlined. Sure. You know, Jay, the, the stars have aligned for anybody that's doing uh, one-off type decorating, whether that be direct to garment, sublimation, uh, cut vinyl, that sort of thing, because it, we are in an Amazon world, or as I like to call it, Amazon Skynet, for anybody out there that, <laughs> that, that understands that reference. <laughs> because when the machines take over, yeah, Amazon will be in the lead. But but here's what Amazon has changed about our marketplace. And, and every one of us who've been in business for, let's say, two years, we've experienced that. If you've been in business for 10 years, it's, it's painfully obvious to you that, or maybe not painfully, just, just obvious that uh, Amazon has made it so that our customer wants one, they want it custom, and they want it today. And, and that, you know, here's my perfect example of Amazon. Uh, Labor Day weekend last year, and, and back when, you know, we used to travel, Terry's big book of travel was full. And, and uh, so I was, was on Labor Day weekend. Terry's big book of cancellation. My big book of erasures. Yeah, it's, it's heavy with, the, with eraser marks. <laughs> and so, but, uh, but uh, so Labor Day weekend on Sunday, I noticed that my desktop printer was getting low on ink. And so I thought, I'll just order it. And when I get back from my next trip, it'll be waiting here for me little box pops up on Amazon Sunday, Labor Day weekend. Would you like free delivery today? And I'm like, well, I don't need it today, but yeah, I want to see that click <laughs> <laughs> about four hours later, knock, knock, knock. And there's the Amazon delivery person handing me $34 worth of inkjet ink for my desktop printer. And it's changed the way people do business. And, and my friends that, that have large automatic screen printing presses, they're coming to me saying, Terry, I've got six automatic presses. All of my 10,000 piece customers are coming to me saying, I don't want to order 10,000 pieces. I don't want to have 9,900 pieces in the warehouse for a stinker that I, that I bought. I oh, want to order point. once a week. I want to order 100 pieces a week and I'll pay a premium for it. But I don't want to carry the inventory anymore. I want to order from you every week, every Thursday. I want to place an order with you. And, and so... The marketplace has gone smaller and smaller and smaller. The volume's still there, but the marketplace, yeah. the number of pieces has gotten smaller and smaller. And, and, and so it is an ideal scenario for, well, we're talking DTG today, but, but again, sublimation, cut vinyl, it's ideal scenario for anybody that can do one piece or four pieces or, and, and you know, uh, I'm an old time screen printer and as, as are you, Jay. And, and, you know, people would come to us 15 years ago and say, you know, I need 10 of these. And you'd say, okay, well, the minimum is 24. The minimum is 48. Uh, unless it's a one color, then we'll do six. But you're paying a premium. That Those same screen printers today are having customers walk in and say, well, why can't you do three? XYZ company on the internet will do three. Uh, ABC company on the internet will do three. Um, so-and-so down the street, they'll do three. And so everything yeah. has, has shrunk yeah. down. And, it's and, a shift. It's a major shift. Yeah. And, you, and, and it's not going away. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the days of somebody coming in saying, well, when my son had his band in Austin, Go Action Team, he would used to complain to me that he'd have to order 200 shirts to get a, a decent price. Well, today, you know, he could hook up with a DTG printer and have a real merch table where he's got... 12 different graphics and it's all full color and it's on black t-shirts and, and 
uh, after every weekend, he could go in on Monday and place a reorder. I need three of these, I need two of those, I need six of this one. And, and uh, so the marketplace, the, the, the customer has, has greater opportunity today too. And remember I said, uh, Jay, that people will pay a premium. Yes, I was just I, talking I to that. somebody you know, a couple of days ago who said, well, in my market, you know, wholesale has to be under $10. And my response to that is you're talking to the wrong people because people will pay for the ability to get one. They'll pay for the ability to get three. They'll pay for the ability to get a fill in of two XLs tomorrow. Right. right. And they'll pay the, a premium oh. for that because nobody, most of our customers are not, resellers of products necessarily i mean they're not they're not a retail store Correct. they are there it's a rock band it's a, that wants to have a merch table it's it's a it's the lawn care company that that wants to put their their crew in shirts with the company name on the front and the phone number on the back that that's our customer none of them want to warehouse products no no you know and if you saw me twitch when you said i just need two more double extra larges every decorator has gone through that oh. after they've delivered the order there's always somebody that you know once a week someone would come back to us and say oh you know what we, we goofed up or there was somebody was late or this certain scenario that happened uh, yeah. we need just two more larges and you're like uh ugh. well okay. jay as a decorator i i remember and every screen printer out there is going to cringe right now the customer walks in the door and says i'm having a family reunion <laughs> your, your first thought is, please have 150 people in your family. I need 17 shirts. <laughs> yeah, 17 shirts. And let me guess, they're all the same size, right, Terry? Oh, yeah, exactly. Little Susie's a 2-4. Everybody knows Uncle Bob. He's a 4X. Yeah. I don't want to pay for another set of screens. So if we could just use one set of screens. Mm, so yeah, that always works. Little looks Susie's really 2-4, six inches wide. Looks really good on Uncle Bob's 4X. Okay, you're but, like, is that a left chest logo? What happened to that? <laughs> But for, for somebody, and the screen printer is going to say, you know, come back in a week or whatever. A direct garment person is going to say, uh, hey, come back at two. We'll have these shirts for you. Yes. And, and, and that person's going to say, you know, well, hey, you know, while I was away and while I went to lunch before I came back to get these shirts, uh, my Aunt June, she's coming also and she's a large. Could, could I, I get one, one more? Right. Absolutely. I'll, I'll yeah. just do it right now while you wait. Even after you've already completed the order. I know that's the flexibility of DTG printing. Yeah. And, and, and to a certain degree, you know, sublimation. But I think that is playing to the strengths of the medium and building on that power of one. It's one of my favorite questions to ask screen printers because I've walked the walk. I can't tell you how many times I said no. Someone would walk in and say, can I just get 10? Can I just get two? Can I just get one? And you, you know, you practice, you just roll your eyes. No, no, no. So it's one of my favorite questions to ask screen printers. For how many more weeks or how many more months will you tell people no? They're trying to give you business. They're trying to give you money and you keep saying no. Why yeah. wouldn't you work on figuring that out? And, you know, Jay, and, when, and doesn't it always lead to more business? Almost I, always. I, I was lucky enough to be on the front end of DTG printing. So 16 years ago, I was at trade shows showing a direct to garment printer. And I remember all my screen printing buddies, cause I thought this would be the greatest thing ever for screen printers. And all the first of all, the screen printers are say, say it ain't so. I yeah, spent right. the last 20 years learning to screen print and you're going to do it with an ink chip printer. I'm like, no, it's not that it's, this is a unique part of the marketplace. And uh, what was really funny is all those screen printers came back to the same shows in the same circuit the next year. And screen print after screen printer said to me, I didn't realize how many orders I turned down until I saw this printer. Because every time they turned someone down, they thought, I could have done that with a direct garment printer. I and profitably, and profitably. Exactly right, exactly yeah. right. Because that person wants five shirts, full color. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. here's reality. Most screen printers don't have the technical ability to mm -hmm. do full color photographic reproduction. I mean, I'm going to say maybe 2% of screen printers really have the skills to do a photographic reproduction on a garment. And, um, and so even if I wanted to, even the quantities are there, you know, direct-to-garment printing is going to do that for you in an instant, whereas, you know, it'd it, it, it take you a couple of years really to get good at, at full color images. And you have to be in a marketplace where the customer demands that because, in reality, the, the bread and butter for a screen printer is one and two and three color work. Jim's towing service, phone number on the back, right? So, yeah, yeah. 
and and that's both uh, uh, what they're used to, what what they know. You know, you get comfortable with what you know. And sure. um, I, I think it's really telling that you said, you know, two percent, maybe two percent of of all screen printers have that technical capability. Well, Terry, you've done a phenomenal job of of kind of through your storytelling, telling us about some of the advantages and some of the ways that we have a competitive um, opportunity with DTG printing. We have the minimum of one, we have fast turns, we have full color printing, photographic realistic type reproduction. Um, is there anything else on that list that you wanna hit before we transition into some well, specific just, niches? Just, uh, I, I wanna add that uh, long-term washability, you know, a lot of folks see direct-to-garment printing and there's an assumption that it's a novelty print, but it's not. In fact, many people out there have direct to garment printed garments in their in their uh, closet and don't even know it because it washes just like a screen print if it's if it's properly pretreated and it's properly cured. So, yeah. Well, one of my favorites too about this when you when you're at the intersection of this particular niche and then printing live, printing on demand, one at a time live, and you're in a niche. That's like the holy grail. That's like the, the $30 t-shirt, the $40 t-shirt, because you're doing something so unique and so custom and live in an event. It's like an experience. People who've never seen it, um, I, I, I can't tell you how fun it was for us to go to South by Southwest two years ago and relive that because for us old timers who've seen this, it's not exciting anymore. But for new people who've never seen the process, I mean, their eyes were just like, you know, coffee cups. They were just like, what? You just push the blue button and, you know. <laughs> this machine is magic. Yeah. <laughs> There's witches here. Yes. It's like, stand back. I, is it, what happened? You know, is it going to just jump onto my shirt? Like, no, it's not that good. But um, yeah, it was so cool to have that experience. And so I really strongly recommend for those of you who tuned in and listened today, look for those future opportunities. I mean, plan for this now. What is, what is the other side of this COVID pandemic going to look like for you and your customers? And in fact, you should be having these types of discussions with your top 10, top 20 customers, thinking about these niches, thinking about opportunities and events, and, and what does that future marketing look like, and how can you play a part in that? So anyway, that's a whole other topic for another day, printing on demand, but maybe we could shift gears and start talking some specific niches or, or, or opportunities that you know, Terry, that you've talked about or that you've seen, I'd like to kind of drill in a little bit more specific on ideas. Where, sure. where would, where, what are some of these potential topics and, and niches, these targets? Well, Jay, when we, uh, when we talk about niche markets too, it, it's not so much that you say, you know, that third thing that Jay and Terry talked about, that's, that's the one I'm going to do. It's to make you start thinking about you know, where you'd like to take your business? What are you passionate about that you can, that you can turn into part of your business as well? You know, you, you love going to car shows. Well, be at a car show, you know, taking pictures and putting those shirts or those uh, cars on shirts. That's, that's uh, where, where you can take your business and, and, and add the passion that you have for whatever event or whatever type thing um, that, that's, a, that's a huge opportunity for you to, to be happy in the work that you do. But, you know, and, and along those lines, Jay, this is something you and I talk about a lot. It's events of a lifetime. And, and people right, want right, to, right. to have 100%. shirts that, you know, and before we went on the air, uh, you said, hey, what's the last big live concert you went to? And I had to right. think back. And I, and I think it was the Stones and uh, the Rolling Stones for anybody who doesn't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> if you don't know the Stones are, by the way, you should just log off right now. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, there goes Jeff Morgenthaler. He just logged off. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it, 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 something like that, why do you want to wear the Stone shirt? Because you can say, I was there. I, I yeah. saw that. I was, I witnessed this. And, and um, it, you know, another example is... Um, Hold on, Terry. That, that, that just, that's so powerful. I have to... I have to hit on that. I have to accentuate that. I have to bring some up. Lifetime. We're talking about something that's an event that's capturing a memory and experience, the feeling you were there. That's, that's probably the most powerful. And it doesn't have to be a rock concert. It's ev where else does that happen? And if you start making a list of where else does that happen, that's where you go to find a premium. That's where you go to find, I'm going to say, the, I'm going to use the term freak in a positive way. The, the, the fan base is more than just casual. They are hard 
core fans of the Rolling Stones, of Corvettes, not any Corvette, 1966, right? Of a particular breed of horse, of a particular skateboard, of a particular, you know, it's like when we used to listen to music back in the old days, right? It was like, it was like four genres, four categories, pop, country, rock, gospel, maybe R&B. So let's give them five. Okay. That was all, it. In the all song. on 8-track. <laughs> all on 8-track? You had 8-tracks? <laughs> Holy crap, we are old. Okay. Now, if you go to Spotify or you go to any of these other, you know, music streaming services, there's like, I'm not exaggerating, a thousand different subcategories of subcategories of subcategories. That's the niche. Look for the fan or the freak in that space. That's who you're trying to target. The, 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 as Seth Godin would say, the smallest viable market. So if that market's 100 people, but they buy 100 every other week, that's perfect for you. Exactly. You know, Jay, um, two regular guys, every two weeks, we do a cocktail party, just kind of a social distancing. So everybody logs into a Zoom meeting and everybody has a cocktail and we talk about the industry and this and that. And I just happened, and the last one, I just happened to mention uh, the band Fountains of Wayne. And somebody stopped me and goes, you know Fountains of Wayne? And I'm like, well, yeah, it's one of my favorite bands. And she's like, I love Fountains of Wayne. I, I, I don't know anybody that knows Fountains of Wayne. <laughs> and, well, guess what? There are a lot of Fountains of Wayne fans out there, but it's just like what you're saying. It, probably a hundred people in a room, maybe two of them have ever heard of Fountains of Wayne, you know? Right, right, so right. That, that's, the, that's the niche. That's well, the... It's, it's, it's happening already. Terry and I predicted this would happen. It's already happened in our, in our Zoom webinar chat. People are already brainstorming. People are already making suggestions. Somebody said, let's print shirts for Zoom birthday parties. Exactly. That's exactly right. A Zoom family reunion. That's one of the things that I added to our list was the family non-reunion and how many, you know, ideas and versions of that can we come up with? It's endless. And, you know, Jay, and, and so me as a decorator, I'm going to say, listen, I, you don't need to get these shirts from me and send them everywhere. You just give me the address and the size and I'll make sure that they have their family reunion shirts. So when you have your zoom family reunion, then everybody's going to be there in their shirt. And, That's right. and, and how awesome would that be when you look at all those little boxes that every single person is wearing that same shirt. And I'll take and, care of that for you because yeah. I make it easy for you to buy. And the follow-up to that Terry is someone grab a cool perfect screen grab of everyone in the box and then send that file to me and I'll do a follow-up print on tote bags or some other product. Exactly. So it's, it's looking for opportunities to not only hit that emotional once in a lifetime button, but also the follow-up of making it easy to buy from me again. And, and think about it. How many people are going to say, Oh yeah, perfect. And you can't, I mean, you could, you could get everybody logged in, I guess, I suppose, and everybody, you know, do that first and that be the print. But you know what? That's not going to be that original. So I, I don't know. Yeah, the coolness of it would be everybody wearing that same shirt. Exactly. In that, that exactly. Big print. Yeah, that exactly. screen capture. Oh, that's what I think. That's my opinion. What do I know? You know, it's funny you said that about we should do shirts because in, in my, all my classes, when I talk about niche markets or I talk about going out and finding customers, I always say, when a, an event happens, your first thought should be, I should do shirts. And, and there, I mean, it, it's endless, the number of things. And hey, you know, down at our office in Tempe, Arizona, there are five of us working out of that office. You're there now. Yes. That's where I am right well, now. Well, I'm in the office. What do you mean, Terry? Where are you? We, uh, I'm uh, in my home office. <laughs> ah, well, it's I'm social wide, distancing. Buddy. Six years now, six years of social distancing. <laughs> Before social distancing was a thing. You, you were a pioneer. You were like the OG. <laughs> exactly. you, you, you mastered the art. It was the only difference for me since the pandemic started is I can't buy toilet paper. Other than that, I don't know what, what you people are doing with it. but <laughs> Still? <laughs> I, I, one package at the grocery store the other day. Oh, wow. I didn't even I, need it and I bought it. I guess that's what uh, panic see. buying is. All right, all right, all right. We're getting off track, which happens. Let's get back to events of a lifetime or anything else in that category that you could maybe highlight or talk to us about. Well, you know, uh, th there's course graduation and we've seen all these things where kids aren't going to graduate and, and, and there's still opportunity there to do shirts for things like that. And again, it's the onesie, mm -hmm. um, you know, weddings and, and we have probably all seen on Facebook that some relative or someone we know is having a 
social distancing wedding. It's the bride, the groom. It's it's maybe the parents standing six feet away and 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 a minister or just of the peace or whatever. But again, you know, you can have that that Zoom reception and and you know take advantage of being able to do shirts. And uh, here here's a thought along the lines of weddings. You don't have to sell all these things yourself. Uh, th there are still bachelor parties. There's still bachelorette parties going on. But how do you find those people? Call wedding planners and tell them, hey, listen, I can I can do the shirts for bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, and of course, you know, if if you take if you handle it for me, I'll pay you ten percent or whatever. Yeah, right. and, and you think they won't take that order and and make an extra, you know, forty fifty dollars or more? They're they're absolutely going to do that. And every person they talk to, they're going to offer that that uh, opportunity to them. So everybody out there call all the wedding planners in your area. There's still weddings going on. There's still planning going on. If, um, if, if I'm going to put a little qualifier on that, if that's also your passion, if that's also sure. something you really resonate with, if that's a, if that's a, a natural, normal place for you to want to go, like if you're a car guy and, and you're not going to just suddenly start calling up wedding planners, right? I mean, you might, right. but of you know what course. I'm saying? It's like, at the end, I know that's obvious, but I don't want to lose sight of that because sure. um, when we first did this two months ago, that was that was our trivia question. When did when did Terry and Jay start the equipment zone? Um, uh, we, we have a library now, a catalog of I think fourteen or fifteen or sixteen webinars that we've done over the last two months. Two months ago, you and I started a smart marketing webinar because we thought we need to give something of value to both our clients and our future clients that's truly training based, helpful ideas, information. If you could just get one idea and it might make you five or six or $7,000 this month, boom, you know, that's, that's what we wanted to do. And so we, at that time, I was already looking up COVID-19 t-shirts, Corona, Corona uh, pandemic t-shirts, and we saw some funny stuff out there. Right. And both you and I, you know, we're, we're, you know, we kind of kid and joke and, not easily offended. So, so some of it was, was a little too soon for some people, but fast forward to now, it's been 60 days since we did our last webinar. And one of the funniest t-shirts I've seen in that category, in that niche was socially distancing. And then it said practice safe six. <laughs> I, like I mean, it. to me, that was like, I was like, okay, that's funny. Super that's clever, clever. really yeah. clever. And it's got a funny point, a real message. Obviously, we don't want to make light of people who are truly struggling. But at the same time, you know, humor. I mean, come on, people. If we can't get some, some humor out of this and some fun out of this, um, I, don't know, I don't know what this is going to be worth, right? So anyway, we're, we're kind of just rambling. Maybe I got off track there with events of a lifetime. But the, we're in the middle of one is my point. We're in the middle of the event of a lifetime. Could, could, are we profiteering off this? No, not at all. We're... we're you and your friends know what the boundaries are. You, you have a tribe. It's your niche. You might only print 12 of those, but one person wears that. And then everybody's like, I got to have that shirt. Where did you get that shirt? It oh, happens. Absolutely. And I think, we've, I think we've all experienced that over our lifetimes that you see something, you go, oh, that I, I have to have that. I have yeah. to have that. And or I know someone I have to buy that for. Yes. That's, yes, that's exactly. almost a stronger pull. People, people see something, people see something taco related <laughs> and, and they're sending me something. I've got, I've got gifts, t-shirts, taco holders, taco trucks, you know, it, it never ends and it's awesome. And I love it. I love it. Right. So it's, <laughs> we think of other people and say, I got to get that for Terry. I got to buy that, you know, his birthday's coming up or something's coming up or it's just perfect for him. And that's, that's the niche. That's perfect. Exactly. Well, and, and you know, Jay, uh, as we move on here, let's talk about service industry fulfillment, because here in Arizona, uh, a week ago, Monday, uh, the restaurant started opening up again. That's right. That's and right. by gosh, they opened on Monday and, uh, and we were right out at one of the restaurants nearby and sat outside and all the tables were at least six feet apart. And, uh, but man, but, didn't know, that feel good though? Weren't oh you just God. like, yes. I mean, that's a I moment, right? I don't think I've ever been so happy to order appetizers and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, this is bizarre. I love it. You're like, it's something we took for granted. And now, now just that, <laughs> that common, you know, sitting outside, hanging out with a significant friend, other spouse, whoever, and just relaxing and having a meal yeah. and having a drink. I mean, wow. Who would have known? 
Well, and, and you know, along those lines, uh, direct-to-garment printers, this is the ideal marketplace for you. Restaurants, bars, catering, things like that, because a lot of turnover uh, that, uh, you know, when you walk into a bar and they've got that shirt that says whatever, uh, the yeah, name of the yeah, bar, the bar. Or, and, or some uh, established like, like, in 19 yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like here at Cold Beers and Cheeseburgers, I think they have like 10 locations. Uh, the staff, they wear uh, Cold Beers and Cheeseburgers t-shirts, but on the back, they have all these really funny phrases for all mm -hmm. these sayings on the back. And like, I drink water to throw my liver off and, and you know, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, okay, so so we're also, we're also big Spinatos fans here, and we're yes. also big Oregano's fans here. And right. so they do the same thing. I don't know if you've seen them at Oregano's, but one of their big, big pushes was Legalize marinara, <laughs> right? I love it. I yeah. love it. Oregano's on the front, traditional, you know, the logo, the, the branding, and on the back, something special. And they do a few of those and they have limited runs and they don't print them until the next year. And so a lot of times I'll walk in there and I'd say, you guys still don't have any legalized marinara? Come on, man. And they're like, nah, it might be another six months before we do any reprints. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and which which makes it even that much more valuable. The the, the limited edition is 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 huge, but but uh, you know those folks don't want to inventory those garments. They 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 want to. They would love to anyway if they knew they could do it. Call you and say, okay, hey, I hired uh, two new servers. I need uh, I need uh, shirts for a large. I need shirts for a medium. And so maybe that's three different shirts. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's an apron with the logo on it. And and you're the warehouse. And and the next yes, day, yes. you're dropping off that so important. That per and, and that person's name is on the bag. You know, Sophie, whatever, is on the bag. And and the next person, Jim Smith, is on the other bag. And 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 then that's when you go in and say, Hey, you know, St. Patrick's Day is two weeks away, <laughs> a couple months away, but. Uh, um, yeah. I, I had this idea for St. Patrick's Day shirts for your staff. And by the way, you'll probably want to get another dozen because I, I'm guessing every half hour you're going to want to have a giveaway. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We and, do and, that. And, and I printed two. I've printed two. Yes. And, he, and so which do you like better, A or B? And, and, and these aren't finals. This is just kind of the, getting the brainstorming out and showing you what's possible. Exactly. Man, Terry. The printed, the printed sample, Jay, is... Is, is money in the bank. If you're not doing that now with the DTG printer, then we, we as instructors have failed you. And I take, <laughs> I take right. none of the responsibility and I push it all onto my friend, Terry Combs. Um, <laughs> but if you're not pre-printing, do not ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. What's the worst thing a business owner is going to say if you show up and you've never, ever met them and you said, listen, I come in here as a guest all the time. I love your cheeseburgers or I love your pizza or I love whatever. I mean, authentically. And I printed this shirt up. It's got something on the front that's, that's you know, don't change it. It's their, you know, corporate branding. And then something fun, unique and special that's, that's niche focused yes. in their lingo using their buzzwords dude, they're going to order shirts. They just are. And Absolutely. then, and then if I could just parlay this a little bit, especially because we're talking about restaurants, bars, and catering coming back into full force, depending on where you live, um, not full force, but starting to kind of creep back to some new version of reality. Look for the new kit kind of an opportunity back in business kit, new hire kit, new employee kit, post pandemic kit, you know, not just a t-shirt, but the three, four or five items that you could print on a DTG printer so that you've got a mask, a tote bag, a t-shirt and a towel and everything coordinated. And then it's, oh, and this is for Terry and this one's for Jay and this one's for Jeff. That is a way to level up and parlay this, this niche. Well, you know, and, and Jay, and, and, and it doesn't have to be a, 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 a day. It could be a season. I mean, how many sports bars can't wait for the NFL season, season to start? So, and, and here in Arizona, you know, games start at 10 a.m. So everybody's got scrambled, scrambled eggs. Everybody's got a Bloody Mary bar. So what about the logo on the front and on the back? What's in your Bloody Mary? And it's got all the different things. It has little check boxes, you know, all the way down the back, of the, back yeah. of the shirt, you know. And so there's so many things you can do to generate more sales, even from that one customer. And then 
duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Yes. You sell it here, then go with a similar concept down the street to the next place and a similar concept to the next place. And, and if you'll you find, find success, out that's exactly it. You can duplicate it. You just took the words right out of my mouth. If you find that first success, then you can duplicate that and pivot just a little bit so that it's still original. And you might find that restaurants is your niche, or you might find that bars are your niche, or you might find that caterers who cater weddings is your niche. And while you're doing that, you get to know the photographer and guess what? That gets introduced. And then they're like, I didn't know you could put that photo on a tote bag. That's amazing. Right? So it leads to the next thing, which isn't just us hyping. This is real. This has happened to me personally. This has happened to you, Terry. I know it's happened to you personally when you were in your own business and doing this. And then of course, we've talked to hundreds, if not thousands of business owners that have had similar experiences. So um, you know, Harry says, God bless spec samples. Nailed it, Harry. You are 100% correct. And, and be more proactive in looking for that. And, and I know this, this is silly and we all think of plumbers or we think of, you know, the, the butt crack jokes. You know, they're not tired of it. It's still kind of funny to them. You just have to come up with some new original version of that um, uh, and, or, or and something again, else. And, and it's, it's much similar to the, the bars and restaurants is is uh business and home care fulfillment as well because again do you do you think the lawn care folks do you think they're at the home office which might be in someone's garage do you think they want boxes of shirts because trust me when they hire somebody that's a medium yeah. and they go pull that medium box to pull them a shirt out and it's empty it. do you think they're it. happy about that no they're not do you think that they would pay a little bit more for you to take care of that for them all 100%. you have to do is say, yeah, I, 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 need a, I need a startup kit, like you were saying, Jay, and uh, that startup kit might be $45 or whatever. You're going to have the two t-shirts in there, maybe a hat, whatever. When, and, and when winter comes, you know, it's fall and they're still out there doing uh, lawn care. Well, that's when everybody gets a sweatshirt and you are the warehouse. And I'm going to go back to what we said earlier, make it easy for people to buy. That is the key to all this. Most of our customers are not professional buyers. And what does that mean? That means that it's not a retail store that's got somebody that they sp spend their full time buying stuff. Yeah. Uh, for most of us, uh, the, the, our buyer is the person with the short straw. You know, you sell to the PTO. <laughs> That, I was going to say, it's so, it's so true in schools because it's some mom who's super frazzled, has six kids, and somehow <laughs> got volunteered. I can't tell you how many of these have come across my living room. Right. The person who orders the t-shirt is usually the last person to the meeting. Okay, we already passed out jobs. We saved one for you. You're going to buy t-shirts. Do you know anything about it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know how many times I've had to go into meetings and tell my kids, do not tell anybody that we know how to print t-shirts. <laughs> oh, exactly just, right. I'm sorry. That's super funny to me. Okay. I got it's off true. Track. It's totally but, true. Because but, you know, plumbers, plumbers you mentioned earlier, pest control, all yeah. those, all those people, when, when somebody comes and knocks on my door, I want to see they've got a company name on. I want to see that, that logo on the back. Yeah. I want to feel comfortable that, yeah, you're actually from a legit company, you know, and, and, right. and somebody comes and, and to do lawn work, I want to know that all four of those people out there are, are dressed alike and they are professionals. It makes me feel, makes me feel better about paying them to do the work when they show up and look like professionals when they do. hundred percent agree with you. I, one of my old clients was a very, very large pest control. They used to say pest elimination company, talk about rebranding. Um, and that was one of their, that was, that was like critical on their list is that they had to have that uniform, the hat, the patch, you know, the bag. And, and one of their leave behinds was, you know, something branded so that everything was okay. Psychologically, let's relax. These are professionals. They're going to be in my house. They're going to be around my house. They're by my kids or by my pets. You know, you want to be, you want to make sure that the branding and the apparel that people wear mirrors or carries that image. So it's critical. You, you could not have brought up another point. And just let me give you more credit, Terry. Um, this idea of making it frictionless and eliminating pain and being someone else's warehouse, even if that means a dozen shirts, mentally, you've eliminated some drama for them. That means you've brought value. Now you have more purpose. So 
every restaurant, every bar, every every uh, lawn care pest elimination electrician, plumber, etc. That's a problem for them. That's a challenge for them. So if you've addressed that up front and have a plan, you you look like God. This this Terry Combs, he really knows what he's doing. Yeah, hell yeah, I'll pay one dollar more to not have that drama in my life. Of course they would. And are they going to go out and shop? That they're not. They're no. not. It's, this, this, why would I change when all I have to do is send an email? I send one email and it says size large. That's all I need to do. And, and the next day, size large package shows up. So, right. yeah. yeah. The timely too, right on. So, okay. I know you've got some more stories and we're not running out of time, but we're close. Um, talk to us about, I've heard you talk about a client that one of his niches was car shows specific to DTG printing, it, it kind of leads us into our next niche, which is all things automotive and all things motorcycle. Maybe, you know the story I'm talking about, the Barrett Jackson uh, auto guy? I, I do, I do. And um, th this person, he, and he sets up outside and, and guess what? You can do that with an Epson 2100. You can set it up under a tent and yes, you need to maintain a DTG printer in a proper environment. Can you take it out of that environment for a couple of days? If you've ever seen us at a trade show, trust me, that is not the proper environment in, in a trade show. It's, uh, it's either freezing in there or burning hot. They turn on the air or turn on the heat about five minutes before all you guys walk in. <laughs> and true, But true. we're still banging out shirts, banging out shirts. So what this uh, gentleman does is uh, he'll do something like Bear Jackson Auto Auction, and he'll walk around and take pictures of the coolest cars. And then he'll go back to his tent. And he'll drop it into a template. Anybody who knows Photoshop knows that takes about 30 seconds. Drop it into a template that says Barrett Jackson 2020 or whatever. Um, he prints the shirt and he walks back to the car and he doesn't even say anything. He just holds up the shirt. And what do you think the owner of the car says? How oh much? my God, that's my, sh that's my that's, car. Yeah, that's my car. How yeah. much? $40 he sells a shirt for. And he said... And, and, and he says, you know, Terry, I do $40 because first of all, they charge me to be there. But second of all, I thought I'd sell one shirt. I had no idea that a week later, nearly every one of those people will call and say, hey, I need five more of those. I need 10 more of those. Guess how much they are? 40 bucks. $40. Yeah. yeah. Now I said to him, I said, I don't know if I, as a human being, could say to another human being, this t-shirt is $40. <laughs> 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 Other than the people at the Stones concert, they had no trouble at yeah, all. They no, and, they, and, and I know it was $72 at the Rolling <laughs> Stones concert, not 40 but, Yeah, but his response to me was this, and this is all about passion. Yeah. He said, Terry, the guy's car's worth $350,000. You, don't you think he'd pay 40 bucks for a t-shirt? And I'm like, absolutely he would. And I would too, because that's his passion. People will pay any price for their passion. They'll drive across town for two for one milk, but if it's something they're passionate about, and Jane, you and I are both dance dads, and no, that doesn't mean we we go out and dance with the other group of dads. We we have <laughs> thank we're you just, for clarifying that. We're just financing a dance daughter. dancing daughters. Our daughters hundreds are both and like, hundreds uh, and hundreds and thousands of dollars. Which, yeah. by the way, I'm happy to report uh, Peyton as a junior in high school. Their dance team started dance last night they are back to the studio very cool. distancing everything's clean they were all worried about it they took a poll and the parents most of the parents said we're over it let them dance this is yeah. this is their passion this is the thing that they value most in their life it doesn't make sense at this point we feel safe enough let them dance it's just anyway. like that kevin bacon movie we're over it let them dance let them <laughs> Footloose reference in the middle of our webinar? <laughs> what? Oh my God, we're going to have a hard time. Kevin Bacon is always relative. <laughs> Relevant. <laughs> Relevant. Six degrees of bacon. So there, we just had our moment. Um, back to dance dads, your point. Well, you know, uh, the um, it was very, very expensive. But when you go to a, a competition, does everybody get the shirt? Uh, yeah, almost and everybody it, gets. Yeah, this. it's yeah. you know twenty five bucks for the shirt that has the name of that competition. And, and Jay, I used to print for those companies that that put on those competitions. And beautiful customer, by the way, and they're always looking for good decorators because what what they'll do is they'll be at the Mirage in Vegas, and on Monday after the dance competition, they'll call you up and say, "Okay, here's my fill in order. 
I need three of these, 17 of those, two of these, ship them to the Hyatt in Seattle, because that's where our next competition is. And, and, but again, we spent the money on those things because that's what our kids and therefore yeah. we were passionate about, you know. And it was, and it was a memory for them. Exactly. It, was, it was capturing the moment for them. And so, and, and you know, and anytime you get that guilt trip, you know, whether it's you, your, your spouse or whatever, you, you, it's almost impossible to tell your kid no at that point. Right. And oh, by the way, for $5 more, Terry, we'll, we'll, we'll personalize it with her name. Exactly right. Oh, $5 you, more. Would, you would for, for kids, only $5 more? Oh, 10 cents you, more ink, right? <laughs> you, you are a good guy, Terry. Thank you. <laughs> well, I have to tell super fast story. My, uh, my oldest daughter was at a dance competition on the East Coast came home with a really cool multicolor printed shirt, you know, and, and I said, that shirt's awesome. I said, what did you pay for that? And she goes, $25. All of us bought one. And I'm like, you know, I printed that shirt. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like, wait, what? I could have gotten you one for free. <laughs> yeah. There goes another 25. <laughs> um, and Jeff, by the way, is dancing on the inside. He just wanted us to know he's, he's, he's not quite a dance dad, but he's, he is a father of volleyball dad. He's probably, he's a camping dad. He's a Boy Scout dad. So his that kids one, are- That one buckethead kid? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a YouTube reference, everyone. <laughs> Story for another day. Um, let's, let's transition into events because I know that DTG printing and niche marketing are at the crossroads of all events or should be in our minds, right? So- that's that's been changed right now obviously with our with our current situation events might be a challenge right now terry what would you say any ideas any any stories well uh, both my uh, daughters were have been were camp counselors uh for for many many years and i thought man all those camps are not happening the 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 summer camp that that's not but they're all doing virtual camps you know, all of them okay, are doing cool. virtual Tell us camps. About that. So they, what, what is well, that like? So, so you know, the kid goes on the internet, and and maybe today is craft day, and not only is it craft day, but you got a package yesterday with all the materials you need for that craft. Oh, that's and cool. and don't you think that everybody, every one of those kids, because if they went to camp, they showed up at camp, they're wearing a shirt that uh, my daughters worked at Cactus Day Camp. Well. The, do you think those kids are going to put on their Cactus Day Camp shirt when it's when it's craft day for Cactus Day Camp? They are. Yeah. So again, you're going to make it easy on the camp saying, you know, we'll just give us the the address and the size. We'll get them their shirt. And yeah. and you're going to mail them all about their shirts and maybe a little personal note from the camp, uh, the camp uh, uh, director that says, okay, here's our schedule for this week and be sure and wear your camp shirt during the event. And, and, you know, the opportunities are still there. They haven't gone away. Some, some things have disappeared, Jay, that the event has gone true. and yeah. it's gone until next year. And it's canceled but, for the year. Yeah. But other events like, like summer camps, cause you know what, mom and dad still need a moment. <laughs> this is, this hundred percent. They need more than just a moment. They need a moment and a margarita. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, you, whether this is for summer camp for kids or whether it's what I like to call summer camp for grownups, um, Microsoft has a very important uh, conference about this time every year, and it's called Build. And it's, it's targeting mostly, you know, engineers and, and software people. Um, and of course, they couldn't have that. They couldn't have the event. I mean, literally, it was, it was in a state where they were shut down. Like, I, think, I, I don't know if it's Chicago, but, you know, you, you, some states are still like closed. They're not open for business. So what did Microsoft do? Well, they sent everyone who had registered for this. First of all, they shifted the conference to be an online conference, which isn't easy, but totally possible, especially if you're somebody like Microsoft and you have billions of dollars. But they also then personalized the welcome kits and the merch kits and sent them directly to everyone rather than have them show up at a trade show. So those folks still got a cool little ID badge and a lanyard. They got customized socks. They got a t-shirt and they got a little bamboo lunch box that I thought was really cool because it's sustainable and it's like this little clamshell lunch box made out of bamboo. So the first thing I thought of was I wonder if we could DTG print that. Anyway, <laughs> um it's it's an opportunity to be creative. You know, how how do you do that? How do you become part of the solution rather than part of the problem as my dad would always always say. Uh so I'm just thinking that those events, some of them have just shifted 
and there's still an opportunity for you for a DTG well, printer. And, and Jay, maybe 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 uh, the approach is going to businesses saying, "Hey, I know uh, I know you've got lots of folks working from home. My my son in New York City, he he's been told now that he's working from home until the end of June, and and you know maybe you say to them, you send them a shirt, and and say you should have a Zoom celebration with all your employees Friday night at eight o'clock and and we'll get each one of them a shirt. And, and by the way, here's how to do a Zoom meeting. And just, oh, right, right, and, right, right. And just step by step, here's how you do it. And, uh, and kind of a, you know, here's one, two, three, how to hold a Zoom party celebration. And somebody looks at that and goes, that's a really a cool idea. You think they're gonna go out shopping around to find somebody to do those t-shirts? No. No, they're because you just, you just gave them the formula and you just made it easy. Exactly, exactly. All, all they have to do is say yes. And uh, it's just, you know, and Jay, I know we're getting to the end of our hour, but there's so much opportunity out there. And, and, you know, rather than, well, you know, Jay, you mentioned that we've done all these webinars. Well, we could have said back in March, gosh, you know, I think sales are probably going to be off for a while. Woe is me. You know, I guess we'll put our we'll put our heads uh, in the sand for a few months and see what happens. No, we said, you know what? Let's do something productive. Let's be aggressive about this. Let's get out there and take this opportunity to help people build their businesses now or build their businesses for the future and and give them a better, uh, more solid platform to work from. So, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, interestingly enough, we've had a couple of suggestions in the chat where someone asked if we could come up with a list and actually type that list out and, and, and give people some, some starting points. Like, you know, I don't know if the list would be 16 long or 60 long, but we, we, might, we might consider doing that as a follow-up email or, and or, you know, if we were creative types, if, if we were, if only we were creative, today, <laughs> what could we print that on, you know, oh. to create our tribe, to create our culture, so that we could send that to our customers, you know, and, and, and kind of reinforce that, hey, if you stuck with us through this, you know what, good on you, man. You are, you are the crazy, you are officially, you are a pioneer. You, you looked at this and said, marching forward, press on. And when I say press on, I mean literally, and pun intended, <laughs> press forward, press on. So I think, I think we owe it to our, to our, uh, you know, the attendees, to our customers, to those that are hopefully going to be future customers, that they've, they've seen your passion, they've seen mine or any of our guests, Jeff and Roy and, and uh, others that have, that have joined us and said, okay, these guys are nuts, but you know what, they're, they're doing it in the, they're doing it the only way they know how, it's their passion and they're on point and they've shared some great ideas, um, you know, I, and so maybe we could wrap with this. Do you have one more great story, great idea? One more great little nugget, something about a bar. I think you in the notes you said something about, you know, face masks. I don't know if those well, two yeah, come you know, uh, I I was uh, I was at uh, Bar Louie, my first venture out in a couple of months, and and everybody working there had a had a face mask on, and of course, as a as a garment decorator, I'm looking at those face masks, thinking, why don't they say Bar Louie on them? You know, yeah, <laughs> everybody yeah. should have the exact same one, but well, uh, well, why? But why don't they? Why don't they say because Barlow? because no one went in there and said, "Hey, listen, I know you're getting ready to open, or you've just opened. Uh, I can supply you with face masks. Here's the price. Here's here's an example. I printed one up for you. Here's one for you to wear. Yep. And I, I'm sure your entire staff would like to be wearing these as well. And or here's a kit, and each of them get three. One says Bar Louie. One says Insert Straw here. One says. <laughs> margaritas go here or something right and then exactly. guess what if if all those staff people were wearing them what would the patrons probably do hey can i get one of those <laughs> hey, i want one of those oh oh you do well they're they're normally ten dollars uh, but if you order a, a a bloody mary or our drink of the day or whatever you know what we're going to give you one right oh well i was going to drink anyway Ta-da! I'll take it. <laughs> right? I mean, it's so obvious sometimes to, to us because that's kind of how we've been programmed to think for the last 25, 30 years. But I hope that those of you who tuned in and are listening today, that you'll think of these opportunities. Look for these things. No, oh, I said a Bloody Mary. Come on, Jeff. Anyway, always a critic. There's always one, right? Always one. 
anything else, Terry, that you want to wrap up with? I want to give I, you the I, last word. I believe Bloody Mary has come up an inordinate number of times in this conversation. <laughs> but uh, I, I do want to say Equipment Zone is open. We're shipping supplies and products. Uh, so make sure if you need inks and supplies, things like that, you go to equipmentzone.com. And we, uh, you know, Jay and I love uh, having these conversations and, and we will put something together uh, about niche markets that we can uh, share with all of you folks. And uh, looking forward to, Jay, what, what do we have coming up next? Uh, yeah, so Terry, I was going to close with that. So funny that we ended on a face mask topic because we have really pushed ourselves at Equipment Zones to help you. And I know that, that face masks for the rest of the year, for sure, if not beyond, are going to be more popular than hats. Um, they're not just popular because they are almost essential and required in certain areas. So we have new face masks available on what, on our website, on the Equipment Zone website that you can order blank. And we also just recently partnered with, with some brilliant engineer to figure out a way to create face mask platens. We have two different styles now, um, one that is more for the form-fitted masks and one that is more rectangle for the um, less form-fitting masks. Um, and, and both of those are available on our website. And we will be doing a webinar tomorrow with Roy and Jeff demonstrating how to print those. Um, we've done a webinar on masks before, but people keep asking us for more information. And honestly, the target's moved. It's already changed in the, in the, in the months since we did the last one. We have new information with a new platen now, so we can't wait to show you that process live tomorrow. No, not tomorrow, I'm sorry, Thursday. So the easy, easy platen or easy mask platen or whatever this thing's going to be called, I'll leave that up to the marketing wizards at Equipment Zone. Uh, maybe I'll have a vote in that, but, but tune in, watch live and look for opportunities. Jeff and Roy do a fantastic job. They're great trainers. Um, and so that, yeah, tune in. That's our, that's our last webinar of the week, Thursday. Anything else? That's it. That's We're it. done. Go ahead, right. everyone. Well, we'll say goodbye. That was an awkward ending. It was just quiet. <laughs> Two guys staring into the. <laughs> All right. I'll turn off the uh, record now. Bye, everybody.